Alright, welcome back to another episode of Twack Analyzes the Witness. Uh, sorry for the sort of hiatus. Um, it was just a mix of being busy with some things, not having the energy to work on other things, and also I wanted to make sure I took some more time on my notes for the next few episodes. Uh, especially this one, because today we are going to the monastery. Here, I can speed up. Uh, the monastery is pretty important thematically. It is positioned between a lot of other important things as well. Um, but I'm just going to go into it. But first, we have some EPs involving the front steps here. I really like these. The idea is that they all come from this one circle at the top. Ooh, didn't quite have those connected. Uh... This one's always difficult for me. I think there we go. I'm gonna do a few of these at least. Let's see, then we have the one that connects to here, which is this. Uh, oh wait, I can get this one from here. There we go. Yeah, I like, they all come from this one circle, but they all come out of it in different directions. It is very much a, another sort of tree diagram, but this time it's inverted. Uh, so instead of coming from the bottom and going up, it comes from the top and goes down. So it's sort of the opposite. Oop, I don't think I actually got that one. I must have been standing on it. So it's sort of the opposite of uh, the tree growing out of the monastery itself. Hmm. Should be able to stand roughly here or so. Surprised it doesn't let me connect there. Is it more? There we go. I think this is it. Yeah. There we go. I just really like those. Uh, there's a lot of like small areas around here that don't really lead to anything. Uh, but then, of course, you get to the monastery itself. We can open the doors by looking through the uh, lattice in front here. This one's sort of crooked uh, because the corner of the wall has been broken. And then we get in, and all the walls are shut. If you were to go outside, you would see that there is one panel sort of lit up over there. But there's no real way to determine how to solve it. And even if you were to go back here... Oh, that's actually interesting. It looks like there's a, uh, looks like there's a hole in front of it from here. But it's a hole you can't actually see through. That's fun. Oh. Huh, interesting. I never noticed that. Uh, okay, so... I want to go ahead and look at the back first. This is the first of many little things in the uh, monastery. Each face of the monastery has its own sort of purpose. So here you see a person. And then if you go to the right... You can line up the uh, the sort of back wall holes to show the person kind of growing talons and blowing a horn. And then finally, you can look through the window and see them now with wings, kind of become like a harpy or more of a, uh, a different type of siren than the like mermaid siren that we've seen. Also... There is this puzzle with the tree. Note that the bonsai tree is a miniature version of the tree growing from the uh, the middle here. And you can kind of see that with the, uh, the way the roots line up. See, like, these roots kind of come down like this root. So, uh, if you try to solve this, pretty much no matter what direction you solve it from... You'll see that 
it will change the uh, the shutters around the monastery. This is the mechanic that the building uses, and it's used multiple times. Uh, but do note that by doing so, you shut off the windows you entered through. Alright, so then we have sort of a uh, an intro to the monastery. We look through the wall here, through this tree uh, picture. Then this one, the middle doesn't quite line up, but the side does. And I'll go ahead and solve this incorrectly. You see, I could go here, I could also go here. But doing that is wrong. It doesn't work. So let's go back here and figure out why that was wrong. Uh, many people who play this game already know this, but there are these two branches on the ground. And those happen to have broken off from there and there. There's kind of these clear branch break uh, sort of patterns there. Not pattern, like design, I guess. That hints towards the correct answer. So then we go here and wait. We can kind of see how it starts, but we can't see how it ends because of this rubble. So you have to go back outside and see that, oh, it's one to the right, down two and left one, then down to right one. So like that, that, that. So uh, these three pictures here, there's a tree, sort of a cartoony looking tree. You know, kind of just a straight line for the trunk. Uh, then this one is more of a detailed tree, but to me it also looks like a brain, almost. Especially all the leaves and stuff. And then this one, it still kind of looks like a tree, but it also reminds me of a thundercloud. Because um, there's, like, the stuff that should be roots and then branches kind of have this, like, wavy look to it. Uh, a lot of people say it looks also like lightning striking a tree and like the trunk of the tree after it's been struck because it kind of fans out like that as it's kind of burnt. Uh, and I can also see that. I think both make sense in this case. It's like it's the progression of a tree from like a sapling to a more full one to then being struck by lightning. But it's also like three things that are being compared. There's a tree then a brain and then a thundercloud and like you know thunderclouds the way the the lightning kind of bounces in them kind of looks like neurons firing or how people depict neurons firing in the brain okay so that was the outside and now we go back inside and i like that this first one is immediately uh visible when you enter the door so like if you enter through the door you see it on the right you also see this whole mess of branches. And since looking through branches was kind of the key there, you are immediately keyed into like, oh, I probably have to do that here. And it's actually pretty easy to do so. So then you see behind you, you know, you can turn around, but you can't see the whole thing. If you try to back up to see the whole thing, there's something in the way. Oh, it's the branches. But these don't quite line up correctly. But if you're keen, you'll notice that the branches to the right of them do. I think this is a case of where the branches here look unnatural and how they're all like angular and jagged. And also, like, there's no other branches around here that have quite that same pattern. So, it kind of sticks out on purpose that way. And then here, same thing, except we can't line up the branches themselves. But uh, as you kind of mess around with it, you'll probably see that they happen to overlap some of the uh, puzzle perfectly. And then you have this branch with a circle on it. So uh, that is a Z pentomino. Or is that an N? I don't remember. I've done pentomino puzzles, but I don't remember which one that is. Uh, and then that. So it's like that. Nope, I messed up. It's like that. Ta-da. I got it. 
Uh, and then this one, it's again where it doesn't quite line up with the uh, one you just did. But there's another one with a circle here. But it's broken off. And since it was broken off over there, we can be like, I wonder. Da, 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 da. And so we have the, uh, the ability to line that up. But if you do line it up just like this, the way you're facing it, it'll come to that corner, which is impossible. So you have to realize that you actually have to flip it around a bit. There's some interesting rendering going on with the uh, back shutter there. I don't know if that's visible in the recording, though. Looks like it is. Huh. Okay. So that lets us access the panel in the back for the laser. Pretty short, but uh, I want to note sort of the progression of this. So the monastery... I mean, it starts off with this, like, looking through the windows thing. And that is repeated over in the town. But the monastery more as a whole is about, like, having to look at your surroundings. I mean, more so than other, uh, more so than other, like, riddle areas. So, like, the desert encouraged looking at your surroundings, but you could kind of figure out where to stand if you were familiar with just how light reflects. Or the idea of, like, something reflecting off a surface. Uh, and the keep had some paying attention to surroundings, but in a really different context. And there were only four of them. Whereas, like, here, it keeps innovating off the previous one. So here it's kind of normal. Then here it breaks off branches. Then here it's you have to go outside. Then it's you have to look through branches that have leaves. You have to look through different branches that don't have leaves. Uh, you have to look here to create a complete path instead of a uh, instead of looking between the branches, and then yeah, here you have to complete it with a broken branch. It it keeps building off the previous one in a way that is unique, and uh, it doesn't like repeat itself really. Basically, each time the uh, you know the the idea is that you can't do the one you just did. You can't repeat that, which is sort of the puzzle design of the whole game you don't want to repeat yourself that's sort of the uh the useless puzzles the wasted time that people talk about um of course the one thing is the broken branch here that's kind of repeated but the difference is that over here it was very obvious that there was a broken branch because of like the the torn wood uh, whereas over here, it wasn't obvious based on nature. It was only really obvious based on the fact that we didn't have enough information to intuit where, what to put there. You know, we, we uh, didn't have any other clues as to what's going on. Um, so the, the tree busting through the roof is sort of a... Uh, it's sort of another case of nature transforming civilization or technology. In this case, the technology is the building and the tree is just kind of growing through it regardless. Okay, so we've done all the panels, but I do want to mess around a bit more in here before we move on to the laser. We've done one face. And really, this face is the only one that has a purpose while it's closed. But we haven't looked at the back face. Or, sorry, the left face from when you enter. This face is very important. Because you can see that behind the, uh, the panels, there's some fruit hanging in sort of a lattice overhang garden. I don't remember... No, trellises. That's what the word is. But also, there is a environmental puzzle if I can line it up right I think I went a little too far there there we go so here we see an image of a person reaching across for something if we were to go to the right well uh, we don't quite see yet what they're reaching for but we do see that it's beyond a giant bridge 
And if you get way up close, you could see them right there. And there's this huge bridge between them, a huge chasm that is broken. The only way we're able to cross it is by using the flowers and the uh, environmental puzzle in the back. And then finally, we see what they're reaching for. A chalice. Let's back up a bit. But wait. We can't get to the other end of the chalice. Well, uh, we can't do that yet, but we do have an audio log to listen to, so let's do that first. There is nothing in existence but veils hung down. Acts of perception attach themselves only to veils, which leave traces in the owner of the eye that perceives them. Inarabi 1231. Okay, so uh, for one thing, that immediately calls to mind the shutters on the monastery. They're sort of like veils, and everything we either see or can't see is determined with those. Uh, so that is from a work about uh, sort of, it, it, it's very similar to what Kusa was talking about with, like, the, the Wall of Paradise. It's a work about how, like, God doesn't have veils, and everything between humans and God is veils. Like, imperfections, and things that keep us from seeing, like, the true nature of reality or whatever. Um, and, like, the, the, like, holy prophets and different biblical texts all had some veils taken away. Whereas uh, most people don't have any veils taken away. They have all of them. So the shutters here, uh, for one thing, they block the sun from whatever direction it is. Or just sunlight. Which is um, like the holy symbolism that's been going on. The sort of religious symbolism. Creator symbolism. Uh, they block the panels, which is, you know, science. They block EPs, which is spirituality. The one thing they... Oh, yeah. And they block nature slash the world around you. The one thing they don't block is the harpy uh, or siren. So, sirens have kind of appeared. It's part of the shipwreck metaphor of, like... Um, I don't know why I'm trying to line it up again. It's part of, like, the shipwreck metaphor of uh, danger. Like, venturing out and uh, knowing that there is going to be danger along the way. The, the sirens are all on the, the pedestal that the laser box is on. So I think it's sort of going with the those who venture and don't risk uh, will perish, but like God favors those who venture and do risk. In this case, it's that like you won't learn anything by going by staying within your comfort zone and uh, by not taking risks and journeys you know um putting yourself out there and trying new things is sort of how you learn is i think part of what the symbolism is going to which is why like i mean all, there's all these sirens and symbols of danger but obviously they don't hurt you this one here is by a laser there was the siren in symmetry which is sort of a uh it's accompanied by the you can only see it from boat ride but uh after you pass by it you go by a couple environmental puzzles in either direction that sort of thing uh that's the one thing that's not veiled so it's also sort of like uh sort of imperfections that like we kind of have to deal with our imperfections as people uh because there's no way to get rid of them even if we were to raise the uh the back shutters here like we would still kind of have the image of the siren in our head of like the head the trumpet the hand the legs like that's hard to ignore once you see it so that's going to stick with us even if we try to lift that veil uh the audio log is on the same face of the building as the unreachable chalice in this sort of triptych also, all of these are triptychs, three image uh, sort of series, usually symbolic in nature. Uh, it's on the same face as the chalice slash grail, which sort of compares it to Kusa, 
I mean, here we see another person reaching for a grail that's right out of their grasp. Even though we do have a way to grab it, whereas on the peninsula, it was the shadow is grabbing the grail. Here, it's that the environmental puzzle slash fruit is grabbing the grail. Also, yeah, fruit, a fruit of knowledge, symbolism. I don't think that's that big here, but it is worth noting that this is a fruit we use for audio, I mean, for environmental puzzles. Um, so... The one thing is, for this environmental puzzle, there's one spot... So yeah, the goal is you have to close the shutters in order to do so, to actually get it. And there is a spot that lets you close the shutters while also um, being in the perfect spot for the environmental puzzle. And it's right here next to the, uh, the tree, the bonsai tree. But I don't know if you noticed, but the... Uh, the the way or the direction we solve the puzzle in order to actually get this from this spot cause the back wall to open so yeah here you can see like you can look through and you can kind of ignore the 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 harpy siren but it's a lot harder to ignore uh because you know like i said you can still see the head there the hand the shape of the body but it is a little sort of drowned out, if you will. <laughs> That's a joke for people who played this game. Uh, so, yeah, by by uh, reaching the Grail, which also involved us closing a veil, uh, we opened the veil that made us see these like signs of danger, and instead now we kind of see everything around the danger as well, kind of opening ourselves up. It's another case of. Uh, highlighting the things that uh, are risky because, you know, if you venture, you will be saved. All right. Uh, I also want to mention that the sun, I mean, sunlight always comes in, but that's partially because of this face right here. This corner is the corner that's, like, closest to the sun, and then the... Uh, the part of the roof that has the least branches or uh, sort of cross hatching is here where the sun is facing. So it's another case of the sun being visible from most places on the island. It also just brings in natural light in a way that makes sense. Like for a video game, uh, you know, for this game at least it tries to have kind of realistic lighting, even if the art style isn't super realistic. So that's a nice touch there. Also, the blue really contrasts well with the red, I just want to say. Uh, but also, the mountain isn't really visible from the monastery. Uh, like, you, if you step outside, you can't really see it because the jungle's in the way. The only real way to see the mountain is to go in front of these panels. So, opening the, the shutters to do these panels is what lets you see the mountain. So... The mountain is normally, like, omnipresent, uh, but there are a few places where it's completely hidden, and the monastery is one of those. I think part of that is because it's kind of anti-sort of reckless pursuit. Uh, the sirens, while they are a sign of venturing and being risked, they can also sort of be a sign of warning against the, the endless pursuit of knowledge or whatever. Like, or endless just pursuit in general, because, you know, sailors who go out too far may die. Don't want to be too risky, like the, uh, the ship owner from the Clifford audio logs. And, um, you know, the mountain's been really imposing. Sort of devilish, almost. Very ominous. And to actually... The only way you can see the mountain here is to do the panels that allow you to access the laser that allows you to access the mountain. Uh, whereas, like, focusing on the environmental puzzles just makes you turn away from the mountain. Okay. So I'm going to go around to the laser now. 
Also, you can kind of see what looks like the hull of a ship here. I don't think there's really a way to, like, block out parts of it. But yeah, you've got, like, the, uh, the, what is it, the front of it, the, the nose? You have some oars in, like, a scullery. Is that what it's called? Where they put the oars? I don't know boat terms. I only played Oprah Din once. <laughs> Alright. I do like the, uh, the sort of reflective pool around here. Which is relevant for this little Easter egg. On this side, you can see it's the light hitting what looks like a guy screaming out and reaching out his hand. If you were to look in the water, he's underwater reaching for air. Uh, it's sort of a drowning man. It gives a a very uh, very dismal sort of comparison to the siren. Like, oh, this is a guy who followed the siren and paid the price. But also, it is on the laser box. So this could be somebody who ventured while risking and gained knowledge. Of course, he's drowning in the reflection. In this one, he's not quite drowning. Maybe he's plummeting? I don't know. You kind of say it's either way. Let's open up the gate here. So, uh, as far as the monastery's placement, obviously it's opposite the peninsula, which is important because it's related to the peninsula. But also, it's on the border of one of the least settled areas of the island and one of the most settled areas. The town, of course. Um, but even then, the monastery is very secluded. It boxes the player in. So, like... Obviously, when the shutters are closed, you can only see in one direction, whether it's out, back, left, right, whatever. Um, I mentioned that there's, like, a lot of walls that kind of take you places but don't go anywhere. The, the flowers on the back of the trellis here make it so you can't really see the town when you have this window open or just if you're walking back to the, uh, the laser box. Honestly, I do like this area. This is one of my favorite areas in the game, but that's beside the point. If you go this way, you can't really access the uh, the jungle through these rocks, and the mountain gets kind of covered up. If you go here, there's still these walls and bamboo that cover up a lot of the area. And even here, there's just like this uh, big stone wall and trees blocking a lot of the rest of the sight lines, except the gate here uh, the keep is pretty much the, the place that is the most visible from the monastery and it's directly opposite from the laser box uh, so the keep was about like separating things in neat areas even though that wasn't a good idea it was about like you know building walls and whatnot whereas the monastery uh, it doesn't want you to build walls. It is worried about putting up veils, which veils and literal walls aren't quite the same thing, but it's the same concept here where the walls in the keep prevented you from experiencing other ideas, and the veils here prevent you from seeing things fully. Uh, additionally, the keep is, like, mostly intact. There's some rubble here and there, especially towards the, uh, the back half in like the lower class areas but the front half with the hedge mazes was pretty well kept as opposed to this where the tree was kind of allowed to grow rampantly just kind of everywhere broken a lot of places if you go outside you can see a lot of the wood like shingles or paneling from the roof has fallen down there's leaves everywhere there's like weeds maybe growing through the grass Maybe those are just leaves. It's kind of hard to say. The The leaves on the trellis have kind of gotten overgrown. And then even the rock garden has a lot of just stray patches of leaves and whatnot that have fallen. Also, the rock garden's really nice. So, so yeah, like, oh, here we go. Here's the weeds. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty unkept as opposed to the keep. So... Uh, it Also, the monastery is slightly more upbeat than the keep. 
the monastery, it says like, yeah, there are veils, but you can move them around and take them down. Whereas the keep is like, uh, for most people, breaking down walls is impossible. Whereas anybody who walked into the monastery could change those, uh, those windows. So yeah, it's it's directly opposed in ideology here. Maybe not directly, but it is opposed in ideology. And they are opposite each other. So, like, that's the monastery as opposed to the keep. But what's the point of the monastery itself? You might be wondering. Uh, so the pursuit of the chalice that was on this window is impossible in a meaningful way for the person involved. Here, let me let me open it back up. Like we can lift the shutters of the uh, the harpy to, you know, make these shutters fall down. But that blocks most of the image and it also like, you know, makes the uh it doesn't completely remove the image of the harpy. Uh, we can lift the shutters on the trees, but that's not enough to actually finish solving the, uh, the, the last panel. We still have to leave the building. And we can enter through the front windows, but to do any other progress, we have to close those shutters. So, essentially, there are always obstacles in the way. Even when we lift the veils, there are obstacles for something. Uh, however, you know, uh, also the building was built and then the tree burst through it. As if to say that the building cannot be perfect itself. Uh, Ibn Arabi, if I'm pronouncing that right, has said in uh, the text that that audio log was from, that we can't be all perfect because of those veils we have. We can only lift off some veils at a time. Uh, and, you know, if we had no per if we had no veils, then we would be God because God is perfect, that sort of concept. Uh, we can only have one shutter open at once. We can't have every shutter. And so we can't lift every veil at once. We can't spread ourselves too thin. Uh we always have to recognize that we'll have these veils, but they're not an obstacle necessarily. Like, they're not impassable. They may block the way for now, but there are ways around them. So, you know, we can always just change which veils are raised. The one exception is there are always two things open in the temple, the quarter and the front door. Uh, the sun is sort of the, the deific figure, and... Ibn Arabi said that, you know, God is no veils, which is why the sun shining in also has that sort of purpose. It connects to the audio log. And then the door leads back outside, which, you know, provides us with more sunlight. It provides us with the view of nature that is completely unblocked, showing that, like, you know, nature is sort of its own holiness, that natural spirituality uh, it lets us see the peninsula, where there's also the references to holiness and reaching through veils. Uh, also, the, the nature being holiness fits with sort of a more Buddhist sense of Dharma, which, if this is a Buddhist temple, then that would make sense why that's given such prominence. We have the, uh, the Western spirituality and the Eastern spirituality. Uh, and then it also goes back to the town, showing that uh, there is value in others being around, I guess. So, like, other people might have their own veils, but we uh, can only raise one of our own at a time. But together, if we find other people with other veils down or up, we might be able to coordinate, we might be able to... You know, all of us together raise every veil. Uh, and I think that's sort of what the, the monastery is. Is It's always open. Well, once you open the door. It's open, which is the opposite of the keep. The keep is very closed. It doesn't want you to go through. The monastery wants you to play with the windows. Can I walk through here? No. 
The mouse here wants you to play with the windows. It wants you to see through the windows. It wants you to look around you. And I think part of that is sort of a symbolism of mindfulness, which is also uh, a pretty common, like, Buddhist sort of uh, idea. The idea that, like, we you are not alone. There is always things around you. And, uh, you know, you can just pay attention to the things around you. You know, like, sit down and think, like, you know, there's wind blowing at me. Uh, there is... I can feel my clothes on my body. Uh, it it, it kind of makes you more aware of your surroundings, but it also is something that people use for, like... Uh, what's the word? Like, meditation? But it's also a way to be introspective about the world around you. Uh, and I think... It's not that the tree bursting through is necessary, necessarily neglect, but it's also kind of respect for the tree. Because while the tree is bursting through the roof and broke a lot of it, it does provide a lot of shade and cover anyways. I mean, there's still gaps here and there, but that's not as big of a deal, is it? Instead, we can be aware of things like, even though all the, the shutters around us are closed... We know what was on the other side of them, and so it's not like they completely disappeared, you know? Uh, the lightning one here, you can actually still kind of see when the shutters are down anyways. Uh, but, you know, we know that there's uh, a harpy, but there's also other stuff on the pillar. And if we were to close that face, we would still know that the, um, the, the fruit and the EPs are all there in the audio log. So, if you were to be mindful of your surroundings, you wouldn't just say, you know, only the audio log and EPs are visible. You would think, like, there are EPs to one side, there are panels to another side, behind me is the, like, visual Easter egg. And I think that's why this idea of God being behind veils is in this monastery is because it's not saying that we have to physically lift the veils, but by considering things around us, we're able to get a little bit closer. That by kind of being more in tune with our surroundings and, like, looking at the world around us more actively, more intently, we might be able to reach... I don't want to say divinity, but a, a, a better understanding of it?